In the tail end of the 90s, in the first part of the brand new millennium, you couldn't say the word controversy without spawning talk about Marilyn Manson. Yeah, a lot of you no doubt know some of the reasons why that is the case, but Manson's music was one that steadily grew throughout the 1990s, and the man that took Charles Manson's last name seemed to have the same profound effect on youth culture as Charlie did before him. Must really be something within that last name, considering Shirley Manson all made us want to listen to a band called Garbage, and, well, that really wouldn't make sense 50 years ago, I suppose. Even to this day here in 2016, you still hear the legends of Marilyn Manson and just how much that controversy affected parents, not to mention the government, during the tail end of the 1990s, especially with some of the events that circulated surrounding it. But this is a group that is hugely still to this day considered to be very, very influential and still has a lot of fans, even though Manson himself has now decided to go independent instead of being with record labels, and his music doesn't seem to reach as many ears. However, let's take a look at the past and mold it with the present, and let's take a look at five reasons why people hated or still hate Marilyn Manson. Number five, they think that the music sucks. This is actually really tame by comparison to some of the others. Surprise, surprise, this is because of the actual music itself. In the early 1990s, Marilyn Manson was a group that was kind of like this strange hybrid of alternative and industrial with some heavy metal stylings thrown in there as well. It attracted the attention of Trent Reznor, and he signed the band as one of the very first groups that was part of his Nothing imprint. So Manson actually does have a little bit of history there that's going in his favor. Throughout the 90s, the music certainly grew in popularity with some of the initial EPs and LPs gaining the attention of not only the youth, but also their parents and eventually the government. In 1996, Manson was listed as one of the groups that was really corrupting the youth of America in the 1990s, alongside names such as Tupac Shakur, and yeah, that definitely developed a reputation. A lot of people, though, just simply don't like this music because it's either not their style, either that or they don't feel that Manson and his group of, you know, musicians are all of that talented. The whole thing is just garbled noise, and no matter how he has really been able to manifest himself or reinvent himself or try different styles, they just have never gotten into him. And, well, I guess fair enough. Number four, because Marilyn Manson himself is a total fucking nutcase. Whenever he started to get the national attention based around things that happened that he wasn't even really a part of, Manson was getting interviews, a lot of people wanted to talk with him, he was definitely a hot-button person to have on a talk show, and he was also considered by many to be public enemy number one, so really he could have, you know, done the thing where he chose his words extremely wisely, but instead just basically said exactly what was on his mind. After Columbine, he was talking about the need for gun reform or gun control and talked about how the youths in school were being exposed to different things and how the American ideal is certainly becoming more and more of a lie by the day. And these were all things and ideas in the roaring 90s, if you really want to call them that, seemed to be a little bit too heavy. People wanted to protect their children a little bit more from ideas they might be deemed way too scary in this modern world, and that's definitely one that seems to be a popular ideal. What's amazing is that 17 years from those 1999 uh, or 2000 interviews, really, you can't go three posts on social media without somebody delivering you their personal ideals on just about everything. So perhaps Marilyn Manson was truly a prophet. But this is also something that people couldn't get behind because they thought that he was nothing more than a raving loon that had these ridiculous ideals that didn't apply not only to them, didn't apply to their children, didn't apply to their America. Number three, because of the lyricism itself. Now, this is going to be combined also with number two. And number two is that because they worship Satan. Oh boy. So the lyricism certainly was one thing, but the whole satanic idea, I think, certainly was based around some of the violence that was portrayed in there. The sex, it was definitely sex, violence, rock and roll, and a whole hefty bunch of Satan. You know, not satin, great fabric, not Stan, cool guy from South Park, Satan. You know, red guy. Really, really mean person. Doesn't really like Jesus all that much. Tries to tell him to do bad things in deserts. Just not a great guy. You fight him in doom, I think. I don't know. But this is something that was always a real controversy point whenever it came to Manson, especially whenever it came to the things that followed. Antichrist Superstar by itself has Antichrist right there in the name, which caused many people to get upset about that simply because Manson and the boys didn't exactly seem to find Jesus to be all that great of a guy. Well, damn. It's definitely something that caused a lot of Christian groups throughout the, uh, the United States and really throughout the world to want to ban this guy from ever performing. And I say this guy, I mean the entire band, but Marilyn Manson was the central figure. Get over it. 
but this is definitely something that caused some of those bans to go into effect. And the lyricism itself didn't exactly help either, considering some of the events that would swirl after this would uh, certainly seem to have some credence based around the lyrics that were found in some of Manson's material. The funny thing is, is that Antichrist Superstar was either the beginning or the end, all depending on how you look at it, of a trilogy of albums that certainly seemed to really catalog some of these different events and the just overall disple uh, displeasure with the world that surrounds either that or something completely weird. Uh, the, the other two albums that were a part of that were Hollywood and Mechanical Animals, and even though Antichrist Superstar was certainly the album that spawned a lot of the different debates and some of the different, you know, bands initially, it was actually Mechanical Animals that was out whenever the, you know, next reason on, final reason on this list actually occurred, and this was probably the largest one. Number one, and the one that everybody knows, and the one that everybody remembers, is because of the Columbine High School shootings and I'm going to throw in also because of violence by youths that were blamed on Marilyn Manson. On 420, 1999, April the 20th, 1999, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold went into Columbine High School, and of course the rest is history. They opened fire, they lit bombs, they tried essentially to take down the whole school in something that they hoped would rival the Oklahoma City bombing. Based off of this, there became a massive investigation based off of what would cause them to want to do something like this, and it led back to three critical pieces of media that were extremely hot in the 1990s, music, movies, and video games. Whenever it came to video games, games such as Doom and Wolfenstein came under fire. Whenever it came to movies, it was, of course, those of the action variety or horror. And whenever it came to the music, it became bands such as KMFDM, Rammstein, as well as Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson being really the scapegoat of the entire thing. Because of this, Manson started to appear everywhere, whether it be on talk shows, and it was definitely being misquoted and being seen as public enemy number one, as though the man was against America. But before that had even happened, there had been suicides that had occurred based off of Manson songs, such as The Reflected God. There have been other school shootings that have supposedly happened since then that have been based and once again blamed on Marilyn Manson, based off of the you know, the gear that was being worn by the shooters at the time, sort of similar to the Richard Ramirez, you know, ACDC, you know, killings, whatever you want to call that. And it's certainly something that has consistently come back up every single time. It seems that a youth that seems to be disposable or displaced or in the wrong place at the wrong time or really, really angry, it always tends to go back to the music of Marilyn Manson. It certainly did for quite some time. Now, in the most recent events, you're not seeing that because now the blame seems to have been shifted on something, you know, this, something else. ISIS. Not the band. You know who I'm talking about. Or as Jeff Jeffries would say, is is. Either way, Marilyn Manson all of a sudden saw an explosion of very angry, very displeased, hated fans that really couldn't be called fans. These were parents. These were, you know... Frustrated parents that believed that the music had everything to do with the decision of these two gentlemen to shoot up their school. Congressmen wanted to have these guys banned. You know, states caused him to be banned from playing within their jurisdictions. And really, there was just a large amount of witch hunting that really took place. And then all of the blame really fell solely on Manson. To be perfectly fair, Manson was able to craft his response, which came in the form of Hollywood in the form of that album. And that album, which is seen by Manson as the first in the trilogy that ends with Antichrist Superstar, but the sum will be seen as the end of the trilogy considering its release date, is certainly one that's scathing. It's certainly one that's showcasing that the media is something that is always looking for a reason, when in reality they fail to look perhaps at themselves, perhaps fail to see the sensationalism that they themselves cause. Manson's reply, though it was muted by some lower than usual record sales and muted by a strong single, was certainly one that was very brutal, and it was very uncompromising, and it was certainly one that has been completely ignored ever since then. As we saw with 9-11, as we see with every event ever since then, that sensationalism has not actually become tempered. It's instead something that has only gotten worse. But now we have citizens that feel like this information is all around them and is starting to question the things that they believe. And even though it has gotten to kind of an annoying point in 2016, with many people claiming offense and foul to just about anything, it is now something that has a lot more recognition based around Marilyn Manson, based around his comments, his lyricism about the media, 
based around the different terrible things that did happen. I'm not saying that that's justification, but I am saying that Manson being claimed as the real reason behind the Columbine Massacre is one of the most ridiculous things that I have ever heard in my entire life. And those that actually claim such things, and those that may actually still hold on to those reasons, you have nobody to blame except for Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris. Maybe you have some of the other school kids to blame for bullying, if you really want to go that far. It's really not anything to blame. It's definitely not the media. It's definitely not the consumption of that. Really, whenever it comes to movies, music, and video games, that suspension of disbelief and that understanding of the suspension of disbelief is something that should be taught by parents. And if that wasn't something that happened, then there was a failure that occurred there. But either way, Marilyn Manson being seen as the real devil based off of this did two things. One, you certainly did affect record sales. You certainly did affect the man's fame. It went up as opposed to down. But something even larger than that, that you guys actually did, you made it very difficult for fans of goth, for fans of heavy metal, for fans of a lot of style of music, video games, or things to walk around. You made it where everybody looked at them as different. And you actually caused a whole hell of a lot more fear than you actually saved. So you think you did a good thing? No, you really didn't. There you have it. Five reasons why people hate Marilyn Manson. And at the end there, I don't know. Something ridiculous. I have a new kitten. He's not going to be listening to Marilyn Manson for a while. His name is Nemo. He's adorable. Love this guy. He's two months old. He just flopped right back to sleep. If you think there's another band that needs to be roasted, toasted, and burned to a crisp by the Five Reasons series, leave that suggestion in the comments below. Uh, if you think that there's anything that we missed in this video, leave that in the comments below as well. Uh, my name is Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to each and every one of you guys next time. And question your media. Question everything that you hear. Always ask questions. That's why questions always go a lot further than just blanket statements of fuck you, or that was really stupid, or where's the video? Huh. You want to know where the video is? You're watching the video, you dumbass. Take care.